discretion is advised. Hi, um, I need to speak to somebody about doing a welfare check on my son, who I believe is in danger right now. Okay, and what address? 1934 Kensington Drive. Um, and I don't know how you guys do things or how it works or anything, but I believe that his father is abusing him and hurting him and that he's too scared to tell anybody because his father won't let him talk to anybody. He pulled him out of school. Okay, what's your name? My name is Robin Collins and I'm his mother. His name is Takoda, T-A-K-O-D-A. And his last name? Is Collins. Dakota Collins was born on December 18, 2008 in Wisconsin. His parents were Robin Collins and Al McLean. At the time of his birth, Robin Collins is a heroin addict. Al McLean is a controlling, possessive, self-centered, abusive man, and the couple split up when Dakota was born. Due to her drug problem, Robin Collins couldn't take care of the newborn Dakota. So a family friend by the name of Anita Bredesen and her fiance took him in. They raised him as their own and started the adoption process to keep him. Even though addicted to heroin, Robin Collins would come often to see Dakota and take him to her home for visits. But on November 12, 2009, Robin Collins was charged with child abuse. Intentionally causing harm, battery and neglect of a child in Dane County, she admitted to Wisconsin police she had hit 11-month-old Dakota. She received probation for the offense, but this also triggered an investigation from child services, and she loses custody of Dakota. A month later, on December 9, 2011, Collins probation was revoked due to her hardcore heroin addiction, and she is sent to prison. I hurt myself today. For the next several years, Dakota Collins lives in three different foster homes, until Human Services finally tracks down Dakota's father, Al McLean. McLean does a DNA test to prove he's the biological father, takes Robin Collins to court, and on July 18, 2013, he is granted temporary custody of Dakota. On October 23, 2013, McLean receives permanent sole custody of Dakota. But Al Mutuhan McLean is no saint. <laughs> on October 26, 2013, 13 days after gaining full custody of Dakota, McLean is arrested and charged after hitting his girlfriend Amanda Hinsey over the head with a pipe, dragging her by the hair to a car and punching her before driving away with her. Charges of second degree recklessly endangering safety, a felony, and a disorderly conduct and misdemeanor were later dismissed by prosecutor in the case because Amanda Hinsey refused to testify against McLean. On June 30, 2014, McLean files with the Wisconsin court with his intent to move with Dakota to Erie, Pennsylvania. A custody agreement is agreed upon between McLean and Collins. McLean is to bring Dakota back to the state four times a year. One phone conversation once per week and Robin Collins is to have access to his school and teachers and doctors. Robin Collins also signs a notarized letter agreeing to the move, but writes a handwritten letter days later saying she was bullied and pressured into signing the first letter. But it is too late. Al McLean then moves to Dayton, Ohio, and cuts off all contact with Robin Collins. Fuck you! Once in Dayton, Amanda Hinsey buys a house at 1934 Kensington Drive. Al McLean, Amanda Hinsey, her sister Jennifer Ebert, and Dakota's older brother Kaleo all move in on December 10, 2014. But the home at 1934 Kensington Drive ain't no house of love. On March 6, 2016, Hinsey calls police saying McLean is drunk and refusing to leave. Officers respond and find McLean drunk and argumentative. On May 25, 2016, Hinsey calls police crying hysterically, saying McLean hit her and won't leave. Officers respond but no charges are filed. June 9, 2016, Hensey calls Dayton police saying a neighbor is intoxicated and threatening to kill her. Police arrive and find a neighbor in McLean intoxicated and fighting. Incident ends with no one taken into custody. On July 26, 2016, a caller who gives the name Al contacts police from Kensington Drive to report that he was assaulted by Amanda Hensey. Caller disconnects from dispatchers several times as officers gather information. Incident ends with no one taken into custody. On August 20, 2016, Dakota's older brother Kaleo runs away from the Dayton home. By jumping out the second story window and once found, tells police that he is forced to do squats while holding a heavy backpack as punishment. Police contact Children's Services and Kaleo is taken away. Once Kaleo is gone, Dakota Collins' life will never be the same. Dakota attends Horace Mann Elementary School and begins to have severe behavioral problems that show signs of abuse. He also comes to school smelling of urine and feces and is given embarrassingly bad haircuts by his dad. At first, Dakota is sent to the nurse who would wash his clothes. 
but McLean would call the school in a rage when Dakota arrived home from school with clean clothes. The nurse had to post a note in the nursing office reminding staff Dakota was not to be seen by anyone. McLean also wanted daily reports on Dakota, and if there was anything other than glowing, McLean would make Dakota stand in a punishment pose. He would make him stand in the living room and hold a loaded book bag, most days of the week from the time he got home from school until it was bedtime. On the weekdays, if Dakota did not have a good report, Dakota would be forced to stand in this position in the living room for the entire day. The horseman staff called Children's Services 17 times about their concerns for Dakota, and even though Children's Services had a host of resources to offer, including connecting them to medical or psychological services for Dakota, McLean declined their assistance. And for these intrusions, he would take his rage out on Dakota, beating him, throwing him, kicking him, and body slamming him. Any marks left behind would be covered with long sleeves and pants. In April of 2018, Al McLean's mother, Tamika Nichols, drops off Josiah Ashton Nichols, McLean's little brother, and leaves him and never returns. Dakota then loses his room and is moved into the attic, where his bed is a lawn chair, and he's rarely allowed to use a blanket. McLean also sets up a camera to watch him 24 hours a day. On the morning of May 11, 2018, McLean sends Dakota to school in a diaper, and the bus driver notifies the school. Dayton Public School workers and Montgomery County Children's Services request another welfare check on Dakota. Police respond to the Kensington Drive house and get no answer at the door. The next day, Al McLean pulls a gun on the bus driver and threatens him. Ultimately fed up with the repeated interference, from May 12 to May 24, 2018, Dakota is pulled from the school by his father, and the boy is never again seen by the school staff. In order to keep the school out of their business, McLean and Hinsey wrote in false education plans, claiming that Hinsey, who represented herself as his stepmother, would be homeschooling Dakota. On July 31st, 2018, Dakota is formally pulled from school. Dakota was then largely confined to the attic for the majority of every single day. McLean throws out all of his clothes and he is forced to walk around naked from then on. Originally he had the entire attic. However, on November 18th, 2018, Dakota tried to tunnel through the drywall and then launched himself through an attic window, trying to run away like his brother did. McLean and Amanda Hinsey called Dayton police, complaining Dakota is being unruly. McLean asked police to take the boy to the juvenile justice center. Once Dakota is in the back seat, McLean says he doesn't want to press charges and is going to take Dakota to Kettering Hospital for behavioral analysis. At that time, there was not an allegation of abuse, and social workers and doctors treated Dakota in the presence of McLean and Hinsey. During that visit, psychological counseling was recommended as part of an aftercare plan, but McLean did not follow through with making appointments. When the social workers called McLean and Hinsey to assist in setting up that appointment, that help was declined too. After his visit to Children's Hospital, Dakota was moved to the basement while McLean walled off all windows in the attic. This basement was filled with dog feces and urine, and he was forced to spend the night on the cold cement floor naked without a blanket. When Dakota returned to his attic confinement, it was now in a smaller area, deprived of external light. Dakota was only allowed to use the bathroom when Josiah was asleep, because there was a concern that Dakota was trying to show off his naked body, and as humiliation, McLean would call Dakota a fag and call him girls' names all the time. Dakota spent all day and every day in painful torture poses created by McLean. All three adults watched the child from the comfort of their living room. If the child moved out of one of these horrific poses, Ebert or Hinsey would tell McLean of the movement, so McLean would punish and beat him for disregarding the rules. <laughs> McLean took pictures with his iPad of Dakota in these excruciating positions. He was forced to stand naked in the dark attic, bent over so his hands were touching the floor. He was told to hold his pose from when he woke, from 7 to 8 a.m. to 3 to 4 a.m. That's almost 20 hours, all day, every day. But Dakota's reality was about to get worse. When Dakota had to go to the bathroom and no one to let him out, he defecated on the floor. When McLean seen this, he ran upstairs, picked up the excrement and forced it into Dakota's mouth, forcing him to eat it. Dakota tried to refuse, but McLean slowly shoved the soft, hot, creamy feces in Dakota's mouth. While Dakota gagged and chewed on his own feces, McLean held his mouth shut until he swallowed every ounce of feces that had melted in his mouth. Uh. McLean then beat him and body slammed him to the floor. After that, Dakota knew he was expected to eat his own feces or face more punishment. So when Dakota would defecate on the floor, he would eat it immediately, while McLean watched on the TV monitor from the living room. While Dakota was being tortured, Robin Collins had cleaned up her act and had been searching for him in Erie, Pennsylvania. But she finally tracks him down after Al McLean is arrested for a DUI. When she finally talks to Dakota and then Al McLean, she immediately knows something is very wrong. 
On May 6, 2019, Robin Collins immediately files a motion for contempt in Wisconsin court against McLean. Mr. McLean has never brought Dakota to see me once since he has left the state. I have spoken to him once on the phone in four years. On May 13, 2019, Wisconsin court dismisses Collins' motion, saying the case is in the jurisdiction of Ohio since Dakota lives there now. So the next day, on May 14, she calls the police telling them she believes her son is being abused by McLean. Police respond, and dispatch records show the investigating police believe that Dakota was being cared for. What they did know was that McLean and Hinsey had coached Dakota in how to act and what to say. On December 12, 2019, McLean went out drinking. When he came home, he was told that Dakota had moved from his torture position. He went upstairs and turned his drunken anger on Dakota. Jennifer Ebert could hear Dakota crying and saying no more as she walked into her bedroom and closed the door and went to bed. Amanda Hinsey was sleeping on the couch, awoke to the sounds of McLean punching Dakota hard in the stomach and watched from the monitor in the living room. McLean then forced him to drink so much water that he was half drowned. Dakota was left on the floor choking and vomiting. Twelve days before Christmas on the morning of December 13, 2019, the nightmare of Dakota's life was about to come to an end. Jennifer Eber let Dakota down to come down to use the bathroom. Dakota was very weak and was holding onto the walls, and while walking he would wobble and fall and stand back up. McLean seen this and elbowed Dakota hard in the back and ordered him back upstairs. Once back upstairs, McLean gave him instructions to put away his folding chair and bend over for his punishment pose. Because Dakota did not move fast enough, McLean beat him and then had him lay on his stomach. McLean then stood on his back, forcing all of his weight, even reaching to the ceiling to push down his weight extra hard. After this, McLean had Dakota stand in the punishment pose and went downstairs to watch TV with Ebert and Josiah. All the while, McLean was yelling up at Dakota, calling him a mommy's girl and a fag. Dakota moved, so McLean took a bottle of hot sauce and went up to pour it on Dakota's buttocks. McLean would pour hot sauce directly in Dakota's rectum as punishment. This is something that he did daily. Still not satisfied, McLean threw Dakota around some more and grabbed him by the ears, and then he dragged him downstairs. McLean then took him to the bathroom and told him to clean himself. When Dakota did not move fast enough, he was told to move faster or he was going to be drowned. Dakota could barely move, so McLean threw him in the bathtub and began holding him underwater. Ebert was in the living room and could hear him splashing, and Dakota gasping for air. Still not done, McLean took the child back upstairs, and from the monitor, Ebert could see Dakota laying on the lawn chair in a fetal position as McLean stood behind him. Jennifer Ebert could see McLean making a repetitive motion with his hand. McLean's arm motion was going back and forth by Dakota's rear end. Ebert thought McLean was using the hot sauce. But when he came downstairs, he tossed a chair leg behind the dresser. Ebert, who was up early, shrugged it off and went back to bed to take a nap. He was soon awoken by Hinsey, who said Dakota was not breathing. Rather than help or even call 911, Amanda Hinsey and Jennifer Ebert turned their backs on Dakota one last time and walked out the door with Josiah. McLean then ran upstairs and hooked up and plugged the video camera. Then he called 911. 911, what's your emergency? Rather than focusing on the current condition of his son, McLean spends most of the call lamenting about what a terrible child Dakota was and how difficult he was to parent. <coughs> At one point, McLean is instructed to give him CPR. He can be heard retching and then complains. It smells very rotten inside of his stomach. When paramedics told McLean that Dakota had passed, his response to the news of the death of his child was, All right, I tried to get you guys here as fast as I could. Can you hear me? Even still, medics continued to try to revive the child while transporting him by ambulance. Resuscitation was impossible, and Dakota, age 10, was officially pronounced and deceased in the emergency department at Children's Hospital. At his autopsy, the internal injuries revealed the true depth and extent of the torture that he had suffered. Evidence of acute or fresh injuries, as well as healing injuries, were present. External autopsy photos show bruising around the right forehead, right chin, inside the upper and lower lip, and left nasal opening. When Dakota's scalp was reflected, Deep bruising was observed to all areas of the head. With respect to the chest area, he had numerous fractured ribs and internal bruising of the stomach, and severe pulmonary edema, fluid in the lungs, was also noted. Dakota's digestive system was also examined. Common sense suggests one would find the contents of the stomach to be different than the content found later along in the digestive system, such as in the bowels. Not for Dakota. His stomach contents were a tan, yellow, puree type consistency which appeared identical in color and consistency to what was found in his bowels. His entire digestive system from mouth to his rectum was filled with feces. External view of Dakota's back, buttocks, and back of his legs showed healed scars and fresh bruising. On his back there was a type of branding of four letters that appeared to be the beginning of the letter T. T. Dakota's gluteus maximus was bruised to the full thickness, 
In other words, the entire area, all the way to the bone, was one big bruise. There was also significant injury to the rectal area. The anus had two half-inch lacerations. The internal examination of the pelvic revealed abundant blood associated with this injury. He also noted internal lacerations that extended deep into the rectum. The most significant injury related to Dakota's death was severe internal bruising to the back of the neck, through all the layers of the neck muscle directly over the spine. Dr. Castro described this bruising as the type of injury typically only observed in catastrophic events such as a severe car accident. The cause of death for 10-year-old Dakota Collins was listed as follows. Blunt force trauma combined with compressive asphyxia and water submersion. Manner of death, homicide. On December 16, 2019, Dayton Police served a search warrant at the Kensington Drive house. Josiah Nichols is removed from the home and interim custody is granted to the Montgomery County Children's Services. When detectives searched the house, they noticed that there were pictures of everyone including the family pets on the walls, but not one of Dakota. In the living room, there was a door that led to the attic where Dakota was living. As the detectives ascended the stairway, they noticed an overwhelming smell of human urine and feces. The area at the top of the stairs was dark and barren, except for a broken chair. There was no light source, and they had to use flashlights to see. There was no clothes, no books, no toys, and only filth, excrement, and bugs. Two legs of the broken chair were recovered downstairs, one stuck behind the TV, one in a laundry basket outside the bathroom. Further in the attic was another locked room. When the room was unlocked, detectives found a bloody tarp and a filthy lawn chair that they had ultimately learned was Dakota's bedding when he was allowed to have it. Detectives also found a dismantled video camera. After his arrest, McClay showed no remorse for the horrific life and death of his child. From the time he called 911, he attempted to claim the role of the victim in this case. Even on his jail call to Amanda Hinsey, after he had murdered his own child, after years of horrific torture and abuse, he complained about his own discomfort. He needs clothes, it smells, he's being denied undergarments, he is cold, he is hungry, he only gets three cold meals a day, and that his bunk is too hard, or he's concerned for his safety. Amanda Hinsey is so committed to freeing her murderous boyfriend that she even created a GoFundMe account in Dakota's name, but was going to use the money to help McLean. On December 20th, 2019, Dayton police arrest Hinsey and Ebert at the Kensington Drive address. Both are charged in connection with the child abuse investigation involving Dakota. On December 13, 2019, McLean is indicted with seven felonies, including rape. He's accused of abusing Dakota between November 1st, 2018 and December 13th, 2019, but all three would enter pleas before they went to trial. Al McLean pled guilty in September of 2021 to murder, kidnapping, rape, and child endangerment. Amanda Hinsey and Jennifer Ebert both pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter and child endangerment. On September 29, 2021, Ohio Judge J. Dennis Atkins told McLean, what you did was pure evil. You provided no mercy to your son, and you deserve none from this court. Al McLean was sentenced to serve the maximum allowed sentence, 51 years to life in prison for torturing his 10-year-old son, Dakota Collins, to death. Amanda Hinsey was sentenced to a minimum of 22 years in prison, while her sister, Jennifer Ebert, got an eight-year term. The Dayton Public School Superintendent said teachers called Children's Services 17 times to report abuse concerns. I don't blame teachers at all. They did what they could, but people in authority and administration of protecting our children should do more, Judge Atkins said. I'm getting life in prison. I'm strong possibility. Please, y'all, please don't do it to me. Just hang on real quick, okay? I'm only 30, please.